Hi, Dr. Versalotti here. In this screencast, we're going to look at how to create tiers and boundaries in Pratt. This helps us illustrate our analysis when we're reading spectrograms. To get started, we're going to open Pratt. You, after you've opened Pratt, two windows open up. There's this one called Pratt Objects, and that's the one we're going to use, and Pratt Picture. We're not going to use the Pratt Picture at this uh, in this screencast, so I'm going to close it. At this point, you could either record your um, sound or open a sound that you've already recorded, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use one that I have. Now, in order to create the text grid that helps us um, annotate our analysis, we're going to go to annotate on the right, on the menu on the right side, and we're going to annotate to text grid. That opens a hand, a little pop-up window that looks like this. We want to name the tier IPA because that's, we're going to indicate the sounds, the language in IPA. I'm going to delete this because I do not want point tiers. If you need help, you can always click the help button, um, which pops up a little window like that. I'm going to close that because we're going to hit apply and then I'm going to close. You see that when I hit apply, it created a text grid with the same name as the sound. In order to then go and look at, to view and edit, we're going to uh, hit the control button and also click click on the sound. So now I have the sound and the text grid that we just created highlighted, which means both are chosen, and now I can hit view and edit. When I hit view and edit, a new window popped up. It looks like this, but I, and it also popped up with a warning that the, phon the phonetic font might not be available. I'm gonna hit okay, and we're just going to remember that we always have to be very careful about whether our the font we the symbols we chose changes when we're in Pratt. We don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm going to just adjust my screen so that you can see the whole text grid at the same time. And you can see that Pratt has kindly added some uh, IPA symbols here on the right. Now, we uh, can't really do a good analysis this zoomed out, so we want to move in, as Pratt has helpfully told us. I like to move in, um, and I'm going to just move it to the front of the recording. I'm going to move into about maybe right here. And I'm going to just start with this very first recording. Um, I can. The first step we want to do is found, find the boundaries of this word. Now you can see that there's really nothing happening here, but then the waveform gets a little noisy. It's not too noisy, um, and but we do see something happening, right? Some air is moving, some sound has been created. And we can also see a little bit of noise here. Um, and that indicates to me that this is the start of the sound, the word. And then the end I'm going to put here, uh, where the waveform kind of ends. There is still this a little bit of noise, but I think that's just the residual. In order to check that, um, I'm going to scooch it over just a little bit. In order to check, I'm going to highlight this and make sure that this is not really sound. Right, when I played it just now, it was silent, so there was nothing here. So I feel pretty confident that this is the beginning of the sound, and this is the end, and I'm going to click it just short, sure, and I hear the word heat. Now that I have the word um, boundaries created, I'm going to 
go ahead and duplicate this tier. Again, Pratt gave us a little pop-up menu. It says position two, and that's where I want it. But I want the second tier to be called English Orthography. Now, if you're doing this with multiple words, you might want to go through and create the boundaries around each word before you duplicate the tier. Um, but I'm only going to um, illustrate this on one word, so I've done all the word boundary. So now I'm going to make the second tier. I'm going to hit apply, and you see that it created it. I'm going to hit exit. Um, and so now I have two tiers, one called IPA, one called English Orthography. Um, the numbers under here indicates how many segments are, are in each tier. And this tells me that I'm in the second one, two, three, the second of the segments, just to let you know what those symbols mean. Okay, so in this tier labeled English orthography, I'm going to write the word that I've heard, um, which is heed, um, in regular English orthography, as the title suggests. Now, in this tier labeled IPA, I'm going to label the IPA. But in order to do that, I need to segment it into the three separate sounds that make up the word. The first consonant, um, here as a fricative, and it ends about here, and we can see that this probably is a nice vowel because we have formants, um, and obviously with a very big difference between F1 and F2, it's our high front vowel, and I'm going to say that the vowel ends around here because the formants end. Um, and you can see that here's a voicing bar uh, because our vocal folds still kind of vibrate a little bit um, residually, uh, but you can, because it's a voice sound coming up, and, but there is a, a, a stop here where there's less information. And then right here we have the release of the stop and some um, additional noise. I'm going to listen to it just to make sure. Or a duh sound, so I feel pretty confident that this whole part is the duh, and um, this is the H, and this is my E. Um, I'm not putting square brackets here um, because it's labeled IPA, but it is also true that these are sounds, and if you, it wouldn't be incorrect to add a. Um, square bracket at the beginning and end of these. But as I said, that's not necessary because it's already labeled IPA. But just as a reminder, that is the sounds, not the spelling. And that's how you create tiers and boundaries in Pratt.